Next up, what we got cracking right now, I got another aluminum repair here. This is a step to uh, my buddy's boom truck. <clears throat> aluminum. That goes clear over here. Right here's a weld. That's the other side of the weld where the weld broke. So it's been drug on the ground and smashed around and overall just um, what we would call hee hauled and whopper jawed. So, uh, and the good thing is they didn't do anything to clean it up. So they'll be paying. Uh, They'll be paying the hourly rate for a, an aluminum TIG welder to run a water hose to spray the mud off of it at first, so that's good. But uh, now let's get going on this thing and we'll see if we can get it straightened around there where it belongs and welded. I'm going to be welding with the Arc Captain TIG 200P with the foot pedal. And um, I've actually through if you follow the channel you know we've had some aluminum dues and nations that have gone down recently and some some of the mcduzenified was had to do with running the prime weld and running the arc captain and back to the prime weld and whatever uh, but the the current tig torch situation is as follows the, the the 26 TIG torch that came on the Arc Captain is now on the Prime Weld. And I have ordered another 26 torch, so I'd have two 200 amp torches. And uh, the other thing that's happened is I didn't realize when I burned up the torch that came on the Prime Weld, which was a 150 amp torch that I was running on 200 and some amps, uh, I didn't realize when I burned that up that it was repairable, but all I burned up was this hose, this cable hose. And thankfully, uh, I got a comment from a, from a viewer saying, hey, you can fix that torch. So I ordered a hose and I actually ordered uh, another 200 amp 26 torch and the hose from two different places at two different times and the hose came first. So the CK, uh, the CK-17 torch that came on the prime weld is now going to be on the Arc Captain with uh, a new cable hose. And I'll obviously, I know now to be extremely careful and not crank this over 150 amps anytime I'm running the CK-17 torch. Um... Uh, and we've learned, you know, it's nice that Arc Captain put the 26 torch on the TIG 200P. And, and, and that's, you know, really nice because they gave you a 200 amp TIG welder with a 200 amp torch on it. Now, my prime weld came with a 150 amp torch on it, this CK-17. Uh, and, and I was perturbed in the beginning that they sold me a 225 amp TIG welder and put a 150 amp torch on it. But the CK-17 is a very nice torch. Uh, and for most of your operations where you're not going to be over 150 amps, you would prefer this CK-17 because the, the 26 in comparison, uh, it's a big heavy bastard. I uh, heard one one comment uh, from a viewer said that a, a, a WP-26 torch feels like a claw hammer, and, and that's about right. So I am going to be receiving another 26 torch. So I'll have 200 amp torches for both of these machines. But so far, as far as the quality of weld on aluminum, uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. Maybe I'm biased. I don't know. I don't. I, I really like his art captain. I, I really, I really like the art captain. Uh, the only thing that sucks about this art captain is I can't take it and plug it into the 220 on the Trailblazer 
and run it mobile. And we found out that with the prime weld, you can. So that's what's up with that. Now, uh, let's get to work on this aluminum. We'll start out with a water hose. Get the mud off of it.
All right, y'all. While we're on the subject of TIG welding, uh, you know, if you if you saw the car wash gearbox repair videos where I was TIG welding the cast aluminum, I had to TIG weld some on site. Uh, just a quick rundown of what happened there. I took the Arc Captain TIG 200P, and I wanted to run it off my Miller Trailblazer 302 on the 220 volt, and I wasn't able to. Uh, Come to find out from our captain, I asked them the question, why was there an issue? Why was I getting this error code E32? Uh, it's because they said that if your generator welder is putting out more than 265 volts on your 240 volt plug, that'll shut down the, the, the Arc captain TIG 200P. So... Obviously, I put a meter on the Trailblazer, and it spiked a few times to like a 277 volts. I saw it one time over 280 volts. So, that's the problem. Uh, there's something safety in the TIG 200P that shuts the machine down if it senses more than 265 volts. Uh, I did run the TIG 200P and get the job done at the site. I did it on 120 volt, and I wish I had more heat. I wanted the 240, but I got the job done. It was really slow. I ended up running like three passes in a spot that I could have welded across there in one pass. You know, if I'd had more heat, if I'd had it plugged into 240. But anyways, what we found out in that video was that I am able to run my Prime Weld 225 off of my Miller Trailblazer 302 on the 240 volt plug, but I'm not able to run the Arc Captain TIG 200P. Well, you know, I talked to Arc Captain, I got the info from them, and I got a lot of people commenting saying, what about Miller? What's Miller got to say? Why? What? Why does it spike, you know, whatever? Well, I got an answer from Miller, too, and it's right here. Tina printed it out. We got an email back from Miller, and it says, CB, we do not actively regulate auxiliary power in the Trailblazer 302, meaning there is no feedback circuit monitoring the actual output. If the engine speed is too high, this can lead to the auxiliary voltage going above the upper threshold of 264 volts AC. I would check the engine speed to verify it's within spec. The frequency on the 240 volt should be 61 to 62 and a half hertz. Okay, that makes it sound like this is an issue I can fix because it sounds like, oh, if you adjust the engine speed on the Trailblazer and get it so that you're at 264 volts AC or less, then your TIG 200P will work. But this is the next part of the email from Miller. Also, from past experience, cheaper inverter welders like Everlast, Vulcan, Titanium, etc. will trip for over voltage on our machines even when the auxiliary voltage is within spec and there isn't really anything that can be done to make them work. I'm probably not going to dick with the Trailblazer to try to get the Arc Captain to run off of. One reason why is that if push comes to shove, I know if I need to take a TIG welder somewhere, I can take the prime weld. Another thing is I've had these trailblazers for a long time. I bought the first one in 2009, and I've never dicked with them. And when stuff works great and you don't have problems with it, best thing you can do is leave it alone. Uh, I've put brushes in them. I've done maintenance on it. But to go and adjust stuff, I mean, I've run, I've run my entire building. I've, I've literally hooked those trailblazers to my breaker box uh, through a 240 volt cord, double male plug, and fed my entire building and worked in the shop, running the Millermatic 252 welders in the shop when the power was out. 
running off my Miller Trailblazer 302. Uh, run the whole building. This is a big building and the shop. Uh, the only issue I have when I do that is it, this, my big air compressor has a hard time starting. And usually just to make sure that I don't low voltage that motor, uh, if the power's out and I'm running off the Trailblazer, uh, I'll turn that air compressor off. And, you know, usually the tank on my air compressor is so big, uh, I can, if, unless you're doing something major, I can have enough air to get through the outage with just the air that's in the tank. You know, I'm conservative with it, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to dick with it too much more. Um, like I said, I'm probably not going to bother checking engine speed and hertz and, adjusting for uh, AC voltage on the 240 on them trailblazers. I, I'm a real big believer and when stuff works good, you leave it alone. Uh, you know, when the super service truck, I was working on the, I was working in the oil field uh, at on the rigs, doing a lot of field work with a super service truck when uh, it got to the age that it was out of warranty and it went over the miles where there was no warranty. And all the roughnecks on the rigs, man, they were like, oh, yeah, you're out of warranty now. You can put on a, a performance exhaust and get you a programmer on that baby and do this and do that. And I'm like, no, no, boys. When you drive a truck for 100,000 miles and have virtually no issues with it whatsoever, whether it's warranted or not warranted, the best thing you can do with that some bitch is leave it alone. I don't go messing with stuff like that. And I'm not saying I'm afraid to do mechanical work. I'm just saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, you go and adjust something on a machine that you've had since 2009. Uh, and, I mean, on something like that, the first thing you might do is snap off a screw. Now you got a problem. Or get it adjusted wrong and then the screw snaps off. Don't dick with that. If it don't need fixed. If it don't need a ninja and done on it, then you don't ninja on it. Don't never ninja on something or someone that don't need ninja. All right? So we ain't ninjaing. I ain't going to be doing no ninja on nothing. Uh, I still don't. The one thing I don't understand is I would think that the, 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 the I would think that the inverter technology on the Arc Captain MiG 200 and the inverter technology on the on the Arc Captain TIG 200P should be virtually the same. And the MiG 200 runs off the Trailblazer on the 240 volt just fine. I used it yesterday. I welded on a truck frame yesterday. There'll be a video coming up on that. Uh, put a couple front horns on a on a Bronco frame for for a buddy of mine. And I took the MiG 200 and I plugged it into the adapter I made for the 240. And I mig that up with 030 solid wire, just, you know, uh, slicker and all get out. But anyway, that's the update on this stuff. And back to the, back to the boom truck step.
CB here, the No BS Welder. Coming at you with his t-shirt on because I wanted to show you the new uh, t-shirt. NBS Welding here on the chest. Got the American flag on the sleeve. NBS Welding on the back. Get a hold of Tina. Send us an email at nbswelding at aol.com. Get a hold of Tina. If you want one of these shirts, 25 bucks plus shipping and handling, she'll get you a shirt. So I'm plugging the shirts, and while I'm plugging the shirts and doing commercials, I just as well throw in my Thrive. Now, my Thrive system, if you didn't see my Thrive video, I can put a link in there and you can check that out later. Uh, the Thrive system is the supplement system that I've been taking. I'm on my seventh year. Uh, seven years I've been taking Thrive. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a supplement system. I start out first thing in the morning with these capsules right here. These capsules right here. This will get you turbo spinning. First thing, you get out of bed. As soon as my feet hit the floor, I take these two capsules right here and I drink me a glass of water. First thing. Then, within half hour to an hour later, I make a shake. This is a, a micronized powder. I'll put it in uh, about 10, 12 ounces or more of, of ice water. Shake it up real good. Drink that down. Whenever I take the shake, I put on the patch. Now, there's different patches. When you go to the site, you can see whichever one you want. Uh, this is an elite patch. Uh, this is the elite formula shake. There's also the standard formula. If you want to know the difference, I think the elite is geared a little more towards weight loss. And I think the energy from the capsules is a little more spread out. Uh, on the Elite, it's more of a slow release. So, uh, the Elite is the new one, and then there's a standard formula. Uh, I've, I'm taking the Elite right now, but I have, I've taken the standard formula for years. I took the standard formula for over six years. But if, if you want a supplement, if you're the kind of person like me uh, that wants a supplement system, you know... I said before, there's some people that don't take supplements, they don't watch their diet, you know, it doesn't matter if they exercise or not, and they feel good, sleep good, they look fit, and they don't have to, they just, they just, they're just like that. And there's one thing I know for sure about those people is that I'm not one of them. Unfortunately, I gotta take my supplements, I gotta pay attention to what I eat, um, uh, and I got to stay active or I'll gain weight. I'll gain weight and I don't feel good and, and, and that's no good. Uh, and nobody wants to get fat and lazy, you know. And as I'm getting older, you know, I've got to do a little more all the time uh, to keep myself. Man, I want to be right there. You know, I want to be on it. Every day I want to get up and get going and do it. Uh, and, and I, and I got to stay. I got to stay at it, man. So... Uh, it, it, the link it, it will be, uh, there'll be a link in the description of the video and you can find out where to sign up for the Thrive. If you sign up for the auto ship, you get a discount and don't freak out because it's auto ship. You can cancel it whenever you want. Uh, but signing up for the auto ship will save you some money. But this Thrive supplement system, that's going to be your vitamins, minerals, your probiotics, your prebiotics, CoQ10, glucosamine, uh, caffeine. But it's not caffeine like caffeine that's in coffee. It's not like caffeine. This caffeine, they uh, they extract it, uh, you know, from different ways uh, and different sources. It's not just like the the coffee caffeine. Uh, there's no crash with this. And if you follow this system, you get up, you take your capsules, you drink your shake, you put on your patch, uh, avoid all other caffeine. You don't want to be drinking coffee or Red Bull. You don't want none of that. You don't mix this stuff. You, you take your Thrive and, and, and you'll get the energy and you'll stay active and you'll have reduced inflammation. Uh, you're getting all your vitamins and minerals. 
and you're going to fill in those gaps, those nutritional gaps that need filled in. You'll feel better, you'll look better, and be better. So, if you want a t-shirt, $25 plus shipping and handling, send us a request at, at uh, send us an email, nbswelding at aol.com. We'll we're taking some pictures of the shirts where we can uh, throw up pictures every once in a while with that email address in between the videos and uh, buy a shirt. Sign up for some Thrive. Get it on auto ship. Get to taking that and let's roll.